Just got home from the office, wanna head inside and have a quick conversation with you about what new real estate investors should not do when they get started. Let's go. So there's three mistakes that real estate investors make when they get started. Let's start with one, work our way to three, and then we're gonna have a bonus. The first mistake investors make is they don't have a plan. They just go and say, I wanna invest in real estate, so I'm gonna go invest in real estate. That's a great way to do a whole lot of nothing. It's like you're running on a treadmill. You're working, you're working, you're working, but you're not going anywhere or you're not gaining any traction. You need to have a course of action or a plan when you get started. Let's talk about quickly what kind of plan you can have because it does not need to be complicated. You do not need a five page business plan. Eventually you probably do, but you don't really need one at first. What you do need at first is at least a course of action or a direction in what you wanna do. Do you wanna own rental properties? Do you wanna flip? Do you wanna wholesale? What do you want to do? How do you want to invest in real estate? Because each three of those paths has a different starting point and different steps along the way to be successful. If you wanna be a wholesaler, that's great. It's gonna be a lot of hard work. You don't need any money or any credit to do it, but you're gonna to have to go out and grind and be a good salesperson. And you're gonna to have to negotiate and talk and be out and about a ton. If you wanna fix and flip, not as much work is required to actually buy the property because you can buy it from a wholesaler. But then after that, you're gonna to need to rehab it and have a budget and manage people and manage a project. And if you want to own rental properties, it's the long-term path to wealth, but it is also the longest term path to making money. So having at least a course of action at what you want, look at the long-term game. Do you want wealth? Do you need money now? Where's your credit score at? Just look at where you are now and where you wanna be in five years. And that will at least help you get appointed in the right direction to what type of investing you should have. The second mistake that most people make is they have analysis paralysis. It's really easy to look at pictures of a property or go visit a property, analyze it, or fill out a spreadsheet. It's a lot harder to put together funding sources and to go out and actually buy the properties and flip them or wholesale them or keep them as rentals. It's a lot more work. You feel like you've accomplished something just by analyzing. So people get a little sense of accomplishment. They check that box, they analyze it but that didn't really do anybody any good. Now, don't get me wrong. You need to have some analysis. You need to look at the numbers, you need to practice, and you need to actually analyze things, but you need to move to that next step of taking action. I know so many people that say, I've been looking to real estate invest for the past five or six years, looked at a few properties, analyzed them, just never had the you know stones to pull the trigger. So that's okay. It's okay to be a little more conservative. You don't have to be super aggressive, but get over that analysis paralysis. The biggest thing that I have done that has made me whatever level of success you think I have is I take action and I analyze something and I go for it. I make mistakes and I fix them. I hit home runs and I keep going and double down on those things. I'm willing to take action and I'm willing to reap the benefits of that action and I'm willing to pick up the screw ups that I have by taking that action. But just by doing those things allows me to learn at hyper speed, learn on the job, learn on the fly, and then I can and teach you for free here on YouTube. Before I get to the third mistake that most investors make, hit that like button if you haven't and stay tuned for the bonus. So the third mistake that most investors make and the biggest reason that they fail or don't gain traction is they try to do everything themselves. They wanna do the rehab themselves. They wanna find all their own deals. They just try to do everything. And especially when you're new, that's an extremely inefficient way to do things. Now, don't get me wrong. At first, I definitely did my fair share of deal finding and did my fair share of rehabbing and doing what I could on the properties, but that just makes things take time and extra energy and effort and headaches. And you're not going to be good at all of those things. You're probably good at a couple things. Like most people, you're probably not good at every little thing. So hiring things out, leaning on other people, leveraging other people's knowledge and skill set will help you absolutely explode your business. If you want to manage every little rehab and do every little detail and be kind of micromanaging, then you'll probably do two or three rehabs a year and maybe you'll make some decent money. However, if you hire that part out, it may cost you a little bit more money, but you can do 10 and 15 and 20 rehabs a year. So just using scale by leveraging other people's knowledge and skill, whether it costs you money on a rehab, you're hiring that out, whether you're paying for somebody's mentorship, whatever it looks like, leaning on other people that have been there will absolutely catapult your real estate investing career and help you get there a lot faster with a lot less headaches, which I think is what we all want. So the bonus tip is kind of the opposite of tip two, which is analysis paralysis. It's people getting too excited 
excited and falling in love with the property. You have to be conservative and you have to let the numbers speak and listen to them. You can't let emotion get involved too much. If you're analyzing a property and you say, if I sell it for the most I possibly can, a little bit higher than everybody else's, and if the rehab runs perfectly smoothly, then I'll make some money. That is not a way to make a decision. You need to look at the other properties that are for sale and say, mine will sell for in the middle of that. And you need to look at your rehab and say, I know things are going to go wrong, add some extra fluff, add another 10%. And then when you get to that number, that's the number you should be basing your purchase price off. I promise things aren't going to go smoothly, especially if it's your first or second deal. We rehab over 50 houses a year, and I bet 50 of them come in above budget. We do rarely ever hit the budget. No one does. I don't know anybody that hits their initial budget on the rehab. So you just have to be conservative. We do hit our conservative extra budget. We hit the numbers where we add another 10% and add some fluff, but our initial, hey, if everything runs smoothly, that never gets hit. The property's not going to be near as profitable or you might lose money. Hold on. I got a fly in my nose, I think. Why that's a bad thing is you could lose money. If you think you're gonna sell something for 200 and you think it needs a 50 grand rehab and it ends up selling for 185 and it took a $75,000 rehab, that extra overages is probably all, if not most of your profit. So just stick to your numbers, be conservative, don't let emotion get involved too much and just look at it as a business. If you do those four things, I can almost guarantee you that you will have a better level of success than if you just winged it and did it on your own. So if you appreciated this video and you like this, I do this kind of stuff all the time on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, hit that like button over there, subscribe and check out this video over here for a real life case study.